When we model a robot, we usually assume that we have control of the forces and torques at the joints, and the resulting motion of the robot is determined by its dynamics. This is the model we will use starting in chapter 11.4. It's simpler, however, and occasionally even more appropriate to ignore the dynamics and assume that we have direct control of the joint velocities. This assumption might make sense if we trust local joint controllers to achieve the velocities we request. Also, for wheeled mobile robots, it's common that a higher level control system commands velocities of the wheels or chassis, letting a lower level control system achieve those velocities. In chapter 11.3, we study robot control when the controller directly commands velocities, not forces or torques. We'll start with a robot with a single joint, since the ideas generalize easily. The first idea is to use open loop control. Since we know the desired velocity at any instant, our controller could simply command this desired velocity at all times. This is called open loop control or feed forward control because there's no sensing of the actual joint position to close the feedback loop. If there is ever any error in the joint position, however, this open loop approach cannot recover. Essentially, all robot controllers employ feedback and the simplest closed loop controller commands a joint velocity equal to a gain kp times the error theta e. The gain kp is called a proportional gain since the control theta dot is proportional to the error. This type of control is called proportional control or p control for short. The gain kp should be positive to ensure stability. For example, if the goal configuration is one radian and the actual configuration is zero, the error is positive, and a positive gain, Kp, would command a positive velocity of the joint, pulling the joint to the goal configuration. If the gain, Kp, were negative, the joint would move away from the goal configuration with increasing velocity uh, the further it is from the goal. Let's take a look at the case where the desired velocity is zero. This is called set point control because we're controlling the joint to a constant value. Then the rate of change of the error is just the negative of the joint velocity. Plugging in the P controller theta dot equals KP theta E, we get this differential equation in theta E. This can be written in our standard first order form with a time constant of one over KP. The unit step error response is shown here. The larger KP, the faster the error converges to zero. In practice, there are limits on how large we can choose KP. With a large KP, the joint might have excessive vibration as small position errors produce large velocities. Also, actuators have limited maximum velocity, and if the control law is often hitting these limits, then the response of the controller is no longer well modeled by our simple linear differential equation. Now assume the desired trajectory has a constant velocity. Then the rate of change of the error can be expressed as theta d dot minus theta dot, and plugging in c for theta d dot and the p controller for theta dot, we get this first order non-homogeneous differential equation. The dynamics are stable for a positive kp, but the solution to the differential equation shows us that as t goes to infinity, the steady state error is c over kp, not zero. Although this error can be made small by choosing kp large, as we just discussed, there are limits as to how large we can reasonably choose kp. The key limitation is that the p controller needs error to command a non-zero velocity. So while proportional control can eliminate all error when stabilizing a set point, it cannot eliminate all error when the desired motion has a non-zero velocity. In the next video, we'll introduce another feedback controller called a proportional integral controller to address this issue.